This year, I am planning a summer trip where I would like to climb Mont Ventoux and Alpe d'Huez. I already tried something similar in 2023 and the result was not the one that I expected. I failed to finish the Tour de Station. There was a mix of factors like poor training and unrealistic expectations based on my condition at that time and the weight of my bicycle. I was also wrong about my numbers, FTP and watts per kilogram. I already did a video about this analysis, so I know now what I have to change and how to read my numbers. Now, to try again to do something similar like Tour de Station and not to change the factors would be stupid. This year, I have a new approach. I started to train myself during the off-season using my indoor training setup and following a training plan. In parallel, I am also investigating what to do with the bicycle weight. I am taking into account buying a new bicycle with a carbon frame. Maybe this one. Or this one. Or maybe this one. Each of them is going to be lighter compared with my actual bicycle, but not by much. Also, the new bicycle will not be as I would like it to be. I have a limited budget, so my options are also limited. I am still puzzled by this. A different scenario would be to buy the components and make my bicycle. Not impossible, but challenging for me at this moment due to my lack of knowledge and tools. Maybe the easiest thing to do is to understand what components I have right now on my bicycle and to check what I can replace, what new parts to buy that are almost plug and play and to count the weight that I can save with a precise analysis and calculation of the budget. With this in mind, I am starting this investigation and hunting for good deals on the market. Hello, I'm Gabriel and welcome to Cycling After 40. I'm starting an investigation and this is the first video from a series about understanding the components that I have on my bicycle, what is the relation between them and what alternatives I can use to make my bicycle lighter and in this way to make me faster on the climbs. For climbing big mountains, I start learning about gear ratio, cranksets and cassettes. One thing will be to upgrade the cassette or crankset when tackling mountains to rain for easier shifting during climbs. I said to myself that I would buy a bigger cassette that would allow me to have a better gear ratio so I could climb more easily. However, I found that it's crucial to consider the rear derailleur's capacity when installing a larger cassette. As you know, the front and rear derailleurs are responsible for shifting on your road or mountain bike with a higher quality derailleur resulting in smoother shifting. The rear derailleur includes a suspension that enables its cage to pivot. This design helps to maintain proper tension on the chain when switching between different chain rings. When you shift to the smallest chain ring and sprocket, the derailleur moves back to maintain chain tension. Shifting to the largest chain ring and sprocket causes the derailleur to move forward to prevent the chain from snapping. To improve my shifting range, I am considering changing the cassette or the crankset that I have now. Changing the crankset is going to be more challenging and I leave this to a future video. To install a larger cassette, I found that it's important to check the derailleur capacity, as many have a maximum cassette size indicated by the largest disc teeth count. My actual cassette is an 1132. So my first question was, what is the biggest cassette that I can install without changing my real derailleur? How to be sure that it's going to fit and that my rear derailleur is going to work? If you find this content useful and you want to boost my morale, please subscribe, like and share. Thank you. I found out that the derailleur's cage needs to match the size of the cassette to maintain proper chain tension. The cage comes in different sizes, short and long. A short cage has the derailleur wheels close together while a long cage has a greater distance between the wheels. The distances between the wheels can vary by brand and type. To prevent my chain or derailleur from cracking, it must be clear whether or not I can mount a larger cassette. Two things are of great importance for this. The maximum cassette size and the total capacity of the drive. 
When selecting a derailleur, it's crucial to check the maximum size of the largest cassette sprocket it can accommodate. For instance, on the product page of the Shimano 105R7000 road bike rear derailleur, I see a specification indicated largest cassette sprocket 34T, meaning this derailleur can handle a cassette with the largest sprocket of up to 34 teeth. My actual cassette is 1132, so changing this cassette with a new one that will be 1134 is not going to have a huge impact on my climbing sessions. I need to do something else. I need to check more things. I found out that if a certain derailleur exceeds the maximum cassette size, it may not always require purchasing a new derailleur. In many cases, simply replacing the cage is sufficient. For example, if you have a road bike with a Shimano Ultegra Air 8000 rear derailleur equipped with a short cage, which has a maximum cassette ring capacity of 30 feet, and you want to mount an 1132 cassette that exceeds the maximum capacity, you can opt to install a long cage. This will increase the maximum cassette ring capacity to 34 feet. I already have the long cage on the 105R7000 series, so for me there is no option to have a longer cage. But looking deeper, I found on the product specification page the capacity parameter. What is this? It turns out that the capacity of the derailleur is not only affected by the cassette, but also by the crankset when combined with the cassette. The difference in teeth between the largest and smallest front sheets, as well as the largest and smallest cassette sheets, determines the maximum drive capacity and can be calculated using a simple formula. So, I did a calculation for my specific case. I have a 5034 crankset and an 1132 cassette. So, in my case, the capacity is equal to 37. Checking again the specification, I see that the capacity for my derailleur is 39, which indeed confirms that the maximum cassette that I can install can be 1134. But I already said that replacing my 1132 with an 1134 is not going to help me much. However, it's good to know how to calculate this and be aware that by changing my crankset, I can modify the result from this formula and in this way, I can install a bigger cassette. Changing the crankset will be an option, but what is the calculation in this case? If I would like to keep the same derailleur with a capacity of 39 and have an 1136 cassette, then I will need a crankset with a value of 14. This 1136 is above the maximum specified by the manufacturer, but I've read that many did this upgrade and will work for sure. Searching for different cranksets with a minimum impact in changing other parts for my bicycle, I found that I could buy and install a 5238 Dura Ace Air 9000 or a 5339 Ultegra Air 8000 series. This is going to work on the calculation point of view, but will not help me during climbing because I will have a 39 in the front. Good to know this option, but it's not feasible in my case. I will not improve my climbing condition with the Shimano 2x crankset made for the road. I can improve my gear ratio if I use a gear axe crankset, but then I will have to change also my front derailleur. It is an option that I will explore later. I've created this table list for different brands of derailleurs and their capabilities. If you are interested in finding out what are the limits for your rear derailleur and cassette, feel free to use these tables. I've made separate tables for Shimano, SRAM and Campagnolo. So far, I found out that I can't do much by keeping my existing rear derailleur and I can't use a bigger cassette. I can use 1134 instead of 1132 that I have right now. What I will do next will be to check the weight saving if I will use different cassettes from Shimano or a different brand. My current 11 speed cassette 1132 weighs 320 grams. If I will replace my cassette with any of these, I will save some weight. Maybe in the end I will have the same gear ratio, but by using lighter parts, I will decrease the total weight of my bicycle, so I will improve my power to weight ratio and I will fly in the mountains. Thank you for watching, and till the next time, let's spin the wheels.